You're viewing a message from the pulpit of Rolling Hills Church, located in Verona, Pennsylvania. We're glad that you could join us as we open up the Word of God. Today's key scripture reference is Matthew 7, 1 through 6. At this time, I would ask our children to make their way forward. I have a story for you guys this time. Very nice. So, I want to know... Well, let me tell you first. There's, a, there's this verse in the Bible. This guy Paul was writing. This guy Paul was writing... And he had said to this particular church in Rome, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Meaning that any time Paul had a chance to talk about what Jesus Christ has done, he would take that opportunity. So as a way to think about this, how many people do you think in our lives or out in this world need to hear about Jesus? How many would you, to throw out some numbers. How many do you think? A lot, okay. Uh, Two thousand, okay. That's double what you were originally going to say. All right. Over, over five billion. Over five billion, okay. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. You know what's funnier than twenty-four? What? Twenty-five. That actually gets to what we're going to talk about. There are lots of people that have to hear, that have not heard of Jesus Christ or anything yet, right? So as a way to think about this, we, it can seem like a, a big job. That How in the world can each of us actually go to all of these people and tell them of the love of Jesus Christ? How many of you have ever been to the ocean? Okay. One of our favorite things when my family and I, when we go to the ocean, one of the things we like to do with the kids is we'll walk down uh, after the tides have kind of gone through their cycle and we'll walk along the shore and see all the different kinds of animals and sea creatures that come ashore. A lot of times they're already dead, but sometimes you might find a, a one that's still alive. We, found, we saw one time he didn't come ashore but somebody who had caught him uh, a number of years ago, there was a big uh, stingray that somebody pulled into the shore and it was flapping around and spinning, trying to get back out into the water. And eventually they let him go back. No, a stingray is the big, he's this big flat fish with a long tail. So we see jellyfish all the time. They're kind of gooey and nasty and they will sting you. But every once in a while you might see a starfish. And if a starfish washes ashore, even if it's alive, what's going to happen when the tide goes back out or go, goes away from the shore? They Well, they really can't move that well when they're on the shore. So if nobody throws them back out into the water, they're going to die. So there was this guy this one time. He was walking along the shore. And he saw this guy off in, the, in, the, uh, in front of him, and he would see him randomly pick, walk, bend down, pick something up, and throw it back out into the water. And he's watching this go on for a long time as he's walking to catch up to him. And finally, he catches up to him and says, so what, what is it that you're doing? I'm really curious. And the guy said, well, what I do is every morning I come out here or every afternoon I come out and I will walk along the shore and when I see a starfish that is washed ashore, I just throw it back out into the water so it can live. And the other guy is wondering about this. If you've ever been to the ocean, you know that when you look down that way and you look down that way, there's a lot of shore, right? There's lots of, you can walk for a very long time. And so the guy says to the one saving the starfish, he said, you know, I don't get it. You're sitting here, you're, you're going to have to walk for miles and miles and miles. 
And by the time you get down there and save all of the starfish, you're going to have to come back. There are thousands of starfish that have washed ashore. And what's the big deal with saving one? Because there are millions and millions of them in the water. What's the big deal for one? So the guy bends down and he picks up one more starfish and he looks at it and he shows it to the guy and he throws it back out into the ocean and he said, you know what? I made a big difference for this one. This one's glad that I was able to save it. So even though we look at all of these different people in the world and we think, what kind of difference can we really make for billions of people, God reminds us every day that we are to share the gospel with others. And that means one person at a time. We can bend down, pick up that one starfish, and make a huge difference, make a life-saving difference for that one starfish. And we can do the same when we share the love of Christ with others because we are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. We want to share him with all of those that we come into contact with. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you love us enough that you have given us your only son, that you sought to right the relationship that we messed up, that we have run from you, and you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross to take away our sins. And Lord, we pray that we would not be ashamed of the work that you have done in our lives and in the lives of so many countless others. God, that we would always live our lives in such a way that we look for opportunities to share of that, to talk about you, and to allow you to use us to make a life-saving difference in one person at a time. Even though there are so many billions out there that need you, God, we thank you that you can work through us and that you can use us to spread your gospel to so many others, Lord. Lord, it is not too big of a task for you. This is not a job that is too great for you to accomplish. And we pray that we would be obedient in allowing you to use us to share your gospel, to talk about you, and to share your love with others. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today we will be viewing a message concerning judging others as instructed by Jesus in Matthew 7, 1 through 6. This message was given by Pastor J.D. Greer at the 2015 Southern Baptist Pastors Conference, He Must Increase. You can view this message through the link provided in the message description or by typing in the link information provided here. God, we pray for your guidance and for your vision um, as we turn to the book of Matthew. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, oh, it did. Okay. <laughs> so, that's uh, nice because we are going to show a video for, uh, for our message today. Um, we'll take care of the lights and everything so that you can see that a little bit better. But what we're going to, uh, to watch is a video of a uh, pastor... I had heard him speak when I was in Columbus last month for the, uh, for the Southern Baptist annual meeting. For a couple of days before that, they had a pastor's conference. And this particular pastor, uh, he pastors a large church, I think it's in North Carolina, I can't remember. His name is J.D. Greer. And uh, when I sat down, he said, okay, we're going to turn to Matthew 7 and w verses 1 through 6. And I thought, oh, this will be great. I, I might be able to get some things that I can use for when I am preaching from Matthew 7. If you have not been with us, what we do, what we have been doing is just moving through the book of Matthew very slowly. Uh, so we've been at it for a while, and we are just now starting the, the seventh chapter. But after hearing his message, I thought, you know, rather than try to, um, to add on to what he had to say, he really hit, the, hit what I have always thought and what I have always taught concerning this verse 
and he did a phenomenal job with it. Now, remember that he is addressing pastors in this particular message, so you, you want to kind of take it and from talking about pastors and obviously apply it uh, to your own life, but it is still a, a very poignant message concerning, um, as I said, a very misunderstood and abused part of Scripture. So we will uh, go ahead and start playing the video. For more copies of this or other presentations from the 2015 Pastors Conference, please contact SBC Tapes at 817-656-1258 or on the web at sbctapes.com. Um, one of the things that's important for us uh, as a church is that we do I believe here and, and adhere ourselves to these words uh, as, as far as what um, Pastor JD was, was getting at. Uh, yes, we are, believe it or not, um, Jesus was not insane when he said, do not judge, and then in a couple of verses later tells everybody, you know what, you have to judge these people in essence. Uh, John the Baptist, as he mentioned a number of times, John the Baptist judged uh, the, the King Herod. Um, so it's important that we do not take this verse and run to the extreme as far as does this mean that we are never to say anything corrective towards our loved ones or to our, towards our culture. But at the same time, we cannot forget the grace that was shown us. And that means that when we are in an opportunity where we are correcting someone uh, or we are being corrected ourselves, we depend upon and we rely upon the grace that was shown us, that nobody is out of the reach of God. Uh, so I pray that we as a church would remember this message as we go about our days and we see um, where we go as a culture and as a church within this culture and what that means to us uh, with our witness. Visit us on the web at www.rollinghillschurch.today or drop in for a visit at 120 Garner Drive, Verona, PA, 15147. Service time is 10 a.m. on Sunday. Send us a message via email to Rolling Hills Baptist at comcast.net or reach us by phone at 412-795-1133.